worship you with everything within me I worship you with everything within me I glorify you Lord and with my heart open wide and my hands lifted
<clears throat> Amen. You may be seated. Now, when we sing these songs, I know I say it often, but when we sing these songs, they really should be more, they should be more than, more than just a, a few catchy phrases with a melody behind them. Their, their prayers, their, their worship, the, 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 the portion of the service that we devote to singing, we, we call praise and worship because that's exactly, that's exactly what we're doing. We are praising, we are worshiping the creator of the universe. And when we sing songs like I Surrender All, it's a proclamation that, that we are not going to hold on to we're telling the Lord, I'm not going to hold on to the things of my past. I'm not going to hold on to the things that I know that I should have and have released to you in the past. And that's where we sometimes get stuck there. We get stuck because we wind up picking up the thing that we, that we left at the altar in the first place. You know, when we come to the altar, we surrender. We surrender whatever it is that, that's burdening us. We lay it at Jesus' feet but, and, and we sing, I surrender all, I surrender all but but what a lot of us do is say lord i surrender all i surrender all and then we pick it back up and we take it back with us and and that's where that's where the song loses its power the proclamation loses its power because we in ourselves have the ability to leave it behind and surrender it to the lord but we have to tell ourselves hey when i surrender it i'm not going to pick it back up it's going to stay there it's going to stay there so well, there's there's a there's a purpose to every single song that we that we sing. <clears throat> so um, by, by way of announcements, uh, Sarah is doing very well. Gideon is doing very well. Uh, he went in for, uh, for his uh, uh, physical this morning, and uh, everything came back beautiful. And uh, so he is doing well. And uh, one of the, the comments the, uh, the lady made who was doing the blood work or whatever, you know, she asked what his birth weight was. It was eight two, and then what he was now. I think he's like eight nine or, or whatever. And just in a couple of days, and it's like, boy, they're supposed to lose weight, and he's eating well. You know, he's he's eating well. So uh, he takes after his dad. So, um, but uh, no, they're doing well. They're probably watching online uh, even now. But uh, just keep us in your prayers. Um, I am not going to be speaking tonight. Dave will be sharing again this evening. And uh, I will be back next week. I will definitely be back next week. And we will be back. We, <laughs> we, we will be back in Romans. But uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a real blessing for me to be able to, uh, uh, to kind of take a back seat, even over the past couple of weeks, uh, to take a back seat. Uh, have you really enjoyed the, uh, uh, the guest speakers that we've had over the past few weeks? I mean, we've had had uh, Pastor Sam Lopez, phenomenal. Uh, my father-in-law, which was special to me to have my father-in-law uh, come and speak at the church that I pastor. I've spoken in his church when I was out there, and uh, now it was it was interesting because this was the first time I was able to turn around and say, "Okay, you're you're on our turf now. <laughs> you 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 could speak here now." So uh, so it, it's great. It's great to be a part of a, a family that God is really using. Uh, in ministry. Um, but with that, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time with, uh, with announcements. I'm going to give Dave as much time as he needs tonight, but I'm just going to pray over the, uh, over the offering tonight. And then I'm just going to invite you to bring your, uh, bring your tithes and your offering forward. Again, if you have made, uh, if you've made a pledge toward the, uh, uh, toward the Easter renovation project, that does begin this Saturday. Um, if you have not gotten your funds in, you could still do it on Sunday. So, uh, but just notate on your envelope in the special or other category that it's going to the Easter renovation project. Uh, we have, uh, over 65% has come in now and, uh, which is, which is great. So, but there's still, uh, there's still a few things we need to do, still a few things we need to take care of. But if you are available, between the hours of 9, and I'd say about 9 and maybe 4 in the afternoon, um, there, there is a group that's coming and meeting downstairs, so uh, it, it's going to keep me in check anyway because I have to be out. <laughs> so, because you know me, I work, I work. Yes? 
Uh, there will not be, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's this is an adult-only uh, thing because we're not bringing in uh, we're not bringing in daycare uh, simply because there. There's going to be dust. There's going to be scaffolding. There's going to be ladders and all of that, and it's going to be rough with uh, with children. My children will not be here, so neither will Sarah. Obviously, she will be uh, still resting. But um, if you're if you're available this coming Saturday, I encourage you to come out. There is painting. There's moving. There's shelving that needs to be put up, and there's a lot of things. I was going over the list today, and I'm saying, boy, it's uh, uh, I'm I'm glad we have teams coming from outside. I'm glad we're able to partner with other churches because it's going to be a lot of work, but when we are done by Easter Sunday morning, when we have our official opening, it is going to be amazing. It's going to be beautiful. I get excited every time I, I look at the plans. So, uh, so yeah, that's this coming Saturday and the two Saturdays following. So, but I'm just going to say a word of prayer over the offering. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we are able to be a part of projects like this that reach out to the community. And Father, we thank you that you provide every need for us. Your word tells us that you supply every single need that we have. So, Father, we rely on you to take care of our needs. And, and as a step of faith and as an act of worship, we bring our tithes and our offerings into your storehouse. Father, we ask that you stretch every single dollar that comes in and let it go to further your kingdom so that we can better reach this community for you. So, Father, we... we ask you to, to just stretch everything that comes in, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may come. That was good. It dropped right where I could pick it up. Okay. All right. So, don't say what you see. Say what you want to see. Okay? Don't say what you see. Say what you want to see. Don't say what is. Say what you want it to be. All right? I thought about that as I was coming over before. And, um, Pastor, if you can put up Psalm 19, 14. I, I thought about it because one of the things that I, that I love to say from Scripture is this verse. And over, over time, as I've matured, you know, there's, there's and I guess that I've matured. Um, and oh, by the way, tonight we're going to have more rabbit trails and commercials and stuff, just like last week. But, um, and I'll go back and talk a little bit for those of you. I think most everybody was here last week, right? Yeah. Um, and as, I, as I've, as I've kind of grown in the Lord, I mean, I've, I've gone away from verses that were that were like life verses when I was a kid, you know, and, and, and this is one that's just so simple to me that I say it a lot and I say it because it's not always true of me. I say it because this is what I want. 
This is what I want to be true. This is what I want to see in my life. It's that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in God's sight. And to me, I, I guess... I guess I, I look at life and I say, you know, there's so many things that come at us every day. It's, it's ridiculous, the things the devil throws at us. And I mean it literally. He throws things at us. He brings things up. He talks to you about your past. But it's a really cool thing. See, because the past is the one place that we don't have to worry about. It's, it's the one thing that has no bearing on today because God has saved us from our past. The, I mean, the past existed in the past and it's something that's behind us. And it doesn't change. What it was is what it'll always be. That's the one thing that God doesn't do is he doesn't change your past, but he sure does change your future. And the way that God changes your future is in a lot of respects, by what you say. So this verse to me, when I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror, you know, and after I've done saying hello to my father, because every time I look in the mirror, I see him. When, I, when, I, when I'm done doing that, I look up, here, I, I say this. Let the words of my mouth, in fact, let's say this. Can we say this together? Let's just read this together. Let's read it out loud. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the NIV, it's, it actually comes up as my rock and my redeemer. We're in the NAS. I forget which. Yeah, the NIV, my rock and my redeemer. I like the idea of him being my rock, that kind of immovable, un. un Un, unchanged that rock that doesn't move that I know I can lean on and I know that you know no matter where I've been what I've done how I felt who I didn't like today you know he's my rock he's he's my redeemer and those that's something that to me is really important that I can say that and know that it's a confession it's something that I can say that I know will be true because it's God's word. Like last week when we talked about a promise, when he talked about you'll be saved in your house, it says it in the word of God. If you believe what it says and don't doubt, in fact, I guarantee you that the De Benedettos never for a moment doubt that their kids and their grandchildren will know the Lord. It doesn't even come into your mind that it might not have, that they wouldn't know the Lord. And the reason it doesn't come into their mind, the reason they believe it so wholeheartedly is because it's something that's ingrained in them. They are born again. Their kids are born again. Their grandchildren are be born again. It's the idea we talked about last week of the legacy. They continue to say the things that they expect to see. And we should, always, we should. If we have problems with a child, if we have problems with uh, work, if we have problems in any area of life, we should not be saying what's happening, but we should be saying what we want to happen. Amen. What we want to happen. And it's, by the way, I know that it's not as easy as I make it seem, but that's the point. That's the point. It's not as easy as just to say it, but the more you say it, the more you hear it, the more you'll believe it. And the more you believe it, the more it will be true until the point where it is true, where it is true, where you'll see it actually happening. And then you can move on to the next thing. If you have a kid that you have a problem with, one way or the other, big, small, it doesn't matter. You confess what you want that child to be. Okay? You confess what you want to see happen. God will make it happen. So... My, my, my kind of theme for tonight was going to be, how do we live? And I guess what happened to me as I was thinking about that and getting verses together and talk is that this kind of like came in. This actually came in as I was all done. And I was like, okay, well, and we'll start with that. And who knows, maybe we'll end with it again. But I just, 
I wanted to talk tonight just about how do we live. Last week I talked a little bit about, you know, how I had gotten saved. I talked a bit about that and talked about the legacy, like I said, and um, talked about how, you know, you know, I, I'd always kind of believed in God and I was a good kid and all that, but I didn't know the Lord. And I, and I found the Lord, you know, th- as a youth. And uh, by the way, building that youth pastor's office, and here's the same commercial from last week, it is exactly saying and believing the things that you want to see. I mean, we could stand here and say, oh boy, we don't have a youth pastor and we don't have any kids and we don't, but God says that's not the truth. There are plenty of kids coming to this church. They're just not arrived yet. They will be here soon. And when they get here, we need that youth office and that youth room and that youth pastor. And he's coming and he'll be here. Okay, so that's not just the power of positive thinking. It's the power of the word of God. All right? We need to believe that. We need to, we need to, to say those things so that we see them happen. My wife and I, you know, this is what we talk about. I think I said last week, you know, we'll be sitting down talking about something and suddenly we're talking ministry. It's kind of like, kind of like what we do. And um, a lot of times we'll just go through that and we'll believe, we'll say what we want to see happen. What we believe will be, what we believe God wants to see, what God wants to do. So let me just kind of make sure I get into what I wanted to talk about. So how do we live? Well, the Bible says that, you know, we need to live in a number of different ways, right? We live according to what the word of God says. We live according to the leading of the Holy Ghost. I thought I would just get some kind of basic, okay, and, and go back to the first verse that I picked out for tonight, which was uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which is in there somewhere, Pastor. And that this is, this is one way in which we live. For by grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So how do we live? Well, we live by faith. We live by faith. We, we're, by grace we're saved through faith. The very first step of any believer's life is faith. It's faith. You know, you see that verse and you say, okay, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. There's grace and there's not works and don't boast. But the bottom line for any believer's life is faith. How do we live? We live by faith. And that faith brings about everything that we see, everything that we want, everything that happens in the kingdom of God is activated, including the very first step, is activated by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. By the way, that's a real verse. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God says faith pleases him. Not, by the way, works. Now, good deeds are great deeds. Good deeds are important, and that's, but works don't necessarily please God if they're not connected to faith. Okay. So let's, let's take another look at how we live. The next verse. Verses, um, thank you. So here's a longer passage, but it says, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I don't frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came or come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. The, um, I think the NAS basically says, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So how do we live? Well, first of all, again, we live by faith. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God or in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We don't live our life by a set of rules. 
I mean, the Bible's full of things that it says you should and shouldn't do. And it gives you all these items because they're beneficial or they're not beneficial. Okay. Now, I'm not saying the Bible isn't, isn't talking about sin. It absolutely does. It tells you what's sinful. It tells you what's right. And it tells you what's wrong. But in, in a lot of respects, it's about the things that God expects of you and wants you to do and wants you to grow in. He gives you a long list of things and you can, you can turn page after page and he'll tell you all about what he's looking for in your life. But what he wants us to be most concerned with is living by faith in the Son of God. Because none of the things that are in the Bible are outside of that. None of the good stuff, anyway, are outside of that. All the good stuff comes by living in faith. If you don't, you know, I mean, as, as we started out, the things that you say and the things that you believe in your heart, all those things, they're done through faith. You don't say, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight and not believe that the things that God wants to do in your life are acceptable in his sight. You understand what I'm saying? The things that God expects to see from you, the things that God is saying, these are the beneficial things that I, that I want my children to do. When you, he wants you to do them and you do them by faith. And when you say, I want the words of my mouth to be like that, and the things that I think about, the meditations of my heart to be like that, all of that you're doing through faith. If you don't have faith, then there's no reason to say it. If you don't have faith, there's no reason to believe that it'll change. Because before you were saved, you didn't have faith. And as much as you said all those good things, nothing changed. Nothing changed. Before you were saved, you could say, boy, I wish I was a better person. You may not have said it the way you say it now, but you'd say, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I didn't need to be so mean to that person. I, I didn't need to be whatever. But you had no real expectation that things would change. You know, you can do, take courses. You know, there's great courses out there. They're all about making you a better person, but they're not about making you saved. Because they're not about faith. You can take the seven habits, you know, that, that great course. It tells you how to order your life. But without faith, without God in your life, those things just, what's the expression? Shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic? We, we do that sometimes. We, we walk away outside the word of God and we grab hold of something and say, this is really cool and good. But it's outside the word of God. Oh, it looks like the word of God. You know, it looks good. It, it, you know, being positive is good. You know, being nice, you know, you can, there's all sorts of courses out there, like I said, that'll teach you how to be, you know, more than you are. But if they're not taught within the framework of the word of God and they're not activated by faith in the son of God, then, then if that was enough, then Christ died in vain, or as it, said in the, it says in the NAS, he died needlessly. If you can make yourself better by following rules and regulations, then Christ died needlessly. So how do we live? Well, we live by faith. We live by faith. Last week I talked a little bit about, and, and, and by the way, Pastor Mark did a great job on Sunday talking about baptism of the Holy Ghost and talking about actually activating that faith in a, in a new and different way. You know, so many of us, see, I, like, I, like I was talking a little bit last week about getting saved. Well, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I got baptized in the Holy Ghost about eight, 17 or 18 years after I got saved. Now, a lot of folks, especially when in Pentecostal churches, you, they don't let you walk out the back door after getting saved without getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. And there's other places that don't let you get outside unless you get dunked in the tank and then baptized in the Holy Ghost. But for me, it was 18 years later. Okay? And so there was a lot of stuff teaching that it wasn't something for today that kind of interfered with me. It was kind of put up things that made it hard for me to see it. And what I found out and... Um, 
And I found this out by taking uh, the, the Acts course. Remember we talked a little bit about the, there's a Berean School of the Bible that has a, a long list of courses, which you know what, you should take a look at and maybe take. Uh, you can find them on the AG website, but um, it helps. They're, they're, they're instructional and, and, and good in, in many, many respects to help you see things in a different way, especially um, for me, the book of Acts, which when I took the course, it got me to a place where I suddenly realized that I really did need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It was an, it was an area of faith in my life that I was ignoring. I kind of had it put to the side. I was quite happy to be kind of where I was, kind of vanilla. You know, good kid, good guy. I got saved. I had the same mentality. My wife will tell you I was a good guy and everything else. But when, when I realized that uh, there was something different, and there was something more, and there was a true experience we call the baptism of the Holy Ghost or baptism of, baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, I actually ended up crawling <laughs> um, to find it, to get it. And uh, to me, I, I don't know how many of you um, are tonight or understand it fully. And um, I, I don't think in the next 15 minutes or so I'm going to be able to explain it all to you. But I, but I am going to try and just give you some ideas a little bit about it and um, talk just, just kind of move, kind of move that, maybe move, move the ball down the field a little bit for us. And um, because for me, when I talk about how do I live, I, I was okay living by, f- by faith, okay, but I wasn't really living by the Spirit. That's what I want to talk a little bit more about, just over the next few minutes. So, um, and I apologize for my, my notes. See, I'm not always as, I think I want Galatians 5, 16 to 18, and I might have covered it myself. Now this is where I want to be. Uh, walk in the Spirit. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you can't do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. And we're very often, without the Spirit of God leading us, we tend to let ourselves fall back into a, a weighing in the balance. Well, we did more good than bad. We, well, we're, living, we're living by faith, and I'm still weighing myself, coming out better than I used to be. But when you're led by the Spirit, the scales don't matter anymore. You're no longer doing this. It's all gone. You're led by the Spirit. You're moving forward. And and you're listening and hearing and understanding what God is calling you to do. Your faith is, is, is gotten to another level. I had it... I, I kind of think about it like... The, the, the experience of the Spirit opens the door to things in your life that you didn't know or see before. Um, the Bible says, you know, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, I, and, I, and that's true. You, and, and, and the seeing is, is the part that's important there. Because I think a lot of people think of that as saying, well, he can't see it. That means he'll never get to see it when he dies and he go, he'll never get to heaven because he wasn't born again. But the truth of the matter is, is that the, the word really means that he can't see the things of the kingdom. He can't walk. If you're not born again, you can't see the things of the kingdom around you. You can't see the things that God is doing. There, there's a wall up. And the first wall that comes down when you, when you by faith receive Christ the next step forward is when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that takes you to a place that you didn't know existed. Now, you know, we talked last week, and I, and I admit last week when I got to the end, I realized, oh boy, what time is it? And, you know, I'm not much, you know, 
I don't do this a lot, so I don't have an internal clock that tells me, you know, it's time to, time to be quiet and time to finish up. But I did talk a little bit about two verses, Acts 19.2 and 19.6, and Pastor, I think I put them, popped them in back there. And we talked a little bit about this. This is the initial, the, one of the times in the Bible that we see the Holy Spirit coming upon someone. And um, we, we, have this, we have this verse here that says, um, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And, 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 and these guys, these believers said, well, we believe, but we didn't even hear about a Holy Ghost. So Paul basically teaches them and then the next verse, 19.6, he lays his hands on them. There were about a dozen of them that had known John's, John's baptism or what John preached, which was repentance, but they had never heard of the Holy Ghost. And Paul taught them, and when he did it, he laid his hands on them, and the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke with other tongues and prophesied. Initial evidence, we believe is that you speak with other tongues. You speak in tongues. That, to me, was always a bit of a stumbling block. And then I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I spoke in other tongues. I spoke in tongues, and I'm like, oh, my Lord. It was, it was true. It was right. And, I, and, it, and it, it changed me. There you go. See? Do I have a witness? <laughs> Do I have a witness? Now, by the way, commercial break. I understand that this sometimes in some people's minds is a little scary, a little spooky. And it's really easy to see things that aren't speaking in other tongues and prophecy that people do. And I, and I know a guy who used to, during worship, in what he considered in the spirit, laid on his back and stuck his feet up in the air like a dead bug. And, and I was like, what in the world is this guy doing? There's plenty of ways to abuse things. Running around, barking like dogs, doing crazy things. You know, it's really simple. Remember I said last week, I said... I like to take the Bible by what it says, and I don't like to read a lot of stuff into it, and I don't like to make things, it say things that aren't there. It says, they spoke with other tongues, and they prophesied. And it says nothing about all the other nonsense. And that's what it is. It's what it is. And you need to realize that. You see something that looks wrong? You know, what's the old expression about if it looks like a duck's, Look, it is a duck. All the other pieces waddles like a duck or quacks like a duck. If you see something, you say, oh, that's really weird. You know what? It probably was. It probably was. Now, there are things we don't always understand in the Scripture because we're not always well... We're, I mean, we're well taught, but we're not always as experienced. But, you know, and there's preachers out there who will wave their arm. Now, listen, I've been knocked down by a guy waving his arm and not touching me from from 10 feet away. So I know, you know what I mean? There's experiences that teach you things. But, you know, the things that look really far out, sometimes they just really are far out. I mean, we need to just call them what they are. But this is what God said. This is what he said would happen. You would speak with other tongues and you would prophesy. And you know what? That happened. So I get to say that. You know what? I didn't think for a time that that was true. But I can tell you for sure that it is true. I can tell you without a doubt that it's true. And I can get a witness. Yes, I can. Good. Okay. So there's a couple of things I just wanted to say about this. And like I said, I'm just trying to like maybe just move the ball down the field a little bit and I know some of us are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some of us aren't. God's going to deal and, and, and help you see, you know, the next step for you. You know, not me. God will do that for you, okay? But let's just go with another verse now. I just want to go to um, Jude 1. 
and verse 20. Because we're going to talk a little bit about what the Holy Spirit does for us. There's a number of things that he does when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. When we have the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost living inside of us. And the first thing is that by praying in the Holy Ghost, we build ourselves up in our faith. That's one of the, you know, I guess, one benefits, but it's one of the things that when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and you, you pray in your tongues, you pray in the Spirit, you're building yourself up. You're strengthening yourself. You're, you're, you're filling yourself up with the good things of God. And that is part of what I know. I'll put it to you this way. When I don't do this, boy, that Psalm 1914 verse, really, really important. Because <laughs> when I'm not built up in the Holy Ghost, boy, do I ever need to say, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Now, I need to say that all the time, but when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost and I'm built up, there's a lot of times... You don't even realize it. You know, when I, before I came up here tonight, I was wandering around the back behind all of you, just praying in the Holy Ghost, back and forth, back and forth. Because I know that that's how the, the Lord fills me and builds me up. It's how the things that I forgot to, or, or would have forgotten to say, I don't forget. The things that I wouldn't have necessarily had a, you know, an understanding of, God's given me understanding of. So the one thing that I want to be sure that we do is we pray in the Holy Ghost. The, the next verse that I wanted to talk a little bit about was uh, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. And, and, and that, by the way, is in there because he's, it's at the end of a long passage where he's talking about that. But the kingdom of God is not anything but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me get my little note out here. We build ourselves up in our faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. And the result of that is that we have the, to me, the three things that matter most, the three things that we most often lack in our lives. Think about how often you don't have peace. Things come after you, don't they? You lose your peace. You know, it's funny, the Romans had an expression it was the peace of Rome. That's what they tried desperately to bring everywhere they conquered. Basically, it meant that they had their heavy hand on the people and they kept them in line. You know, and you, you see a lot in the, in, in the time of Christ and, 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 the, and one of the main reasons he was crucified in, in the natural, in the spirit, there was a major reason, which we all understand. But in the natural, one of the reasons was because the Romans were concerned about the rioting. They were concerned about all the things that were happening in their, you know, and the, the Jews basically went and said, hey, he's a rabble rouser. Well, the peace of Rome prevailed. And God says, though, the peace of God prevails. And if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and you live in the Holy Ghost and move in the Holy Ghost and don't get concerned about the meat and the drink, the things of the world, you will have the righteousness and the peace and the joy that comes from knowing, from having the Holy Ghost, from knowing God and having him in your life. That to me was something that really 
it made a difference for me. And I, and I realized, you know, even recently, you know, I thought to myself, boy, you know what? You really need to really go back and look at that again. Because peace and joy, you know, they're kind of spinning around you and you can't, I, and I, this is me personally, and I was realizing I couldn't grasp them. I was missing them. I was losing them. And, um, and I needed to know, you know, I had to go back and look at it again. And even in the last couple of weeks when I was looking at this and I prepared a lot of these notes last week, thinking I was going to get it all done in one night, you know, and I have a whole other thing to do tonight. Well, like I said, you know. I appreciate what pastor does and what pastor does. It's not easy. This is not, this is, you, you don't realize how much you got to put into it or, or that, or for that matter, what you build, you know, in two little pieces of paper and what it becomes, you know what I mean? But um, I, re- I realized that the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if I'm not filled up, I lose that. I lose my peace and my joy doesn't come. The righteousness will... Gee, you know, if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost and you're not living it and you, and you aren't extending yourself, you are going to end up, you know, losing your, some of your own, I guess the right expression is you, you're not going to be right, you know, inside, in your spirit. You're not going to be right. And um, I'm just glad that, you know, it's not far away. Because truly, truly, Building yourself up again is, is, is only moments away. You, if you think about it and take the time and stop what you're doing and just let everything else drop around you, say, okay, Lord, fill me up again. Fill me up again. Suddenly all those things go away, all the things that were nagging at you. And in the spirit, righteousness, peace, and joy come. And then... Finally, I think the last thing I just wanted to say tonight, um, Philippians 3.3, 3, or two more verses, Philippians 3.3, 3, a little bit about what, did I put that in, Pastor? Philippians 3.3, 3. okay, let me, if you can get that, I'll, I'll, oh, there it is, good. We worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh, we, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And again, this is part of a little longer teaching and he's kind of talking about the flesh and the spirit and he was likening it to circumcision. And, you know, in Romans, we caught a little bit of that and I think we're going to catch a little bit of that in the, in the next uh, couple, couple of chapters that pastor's going to teach. But the, the bottom line comes here is that in the spirit, we can worship more fully. In the spirit, when we say, when we sing some of the songs, and again, by the way, Pastor said a little bit about what I was going to say when he was talking about the, the, the songs have meaning and the words are important and they all have, an, an, a, there's, there's a reason why we sing certain songs. But when you're within the spirit of God, when you're worshiping in the spirit, you have the, the ability to say things and to sing things and to connect to God in a way that just singing words doesn't. I don't know if I said that the way, I, if it sounded right, but I, I know what I meant anyway, I guess. That, but when you sing, there's no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be but here in your love. Yes. Okay? They're not just words, Okay? And, and that's why, by the way, when, we're, when we sing, are singing in the Spirit and worshiping in the Spirit, we can get lost. We can just get lost in the Spirit. Uh, for me, I can just stand back there and put my hands up and sing, and suddenly I'm like, whoa, I'm just not here anymore. <laughs> uh, or, or something's changed. I'm not in the same spot that I was in, you know, emotionally and, 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 and spiritually. God is there as... And I, and I guess I'm going through this because, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of re, re, recounting to you what happened to me. You know, I'm giving you a te- in case you didn't catch it, maybe I made it, didn't make it. I'm giving you a testimony of me, okay? This is, this is me. This is what happened when I received the Holy Ghost. And I, when I, and I bring this to you because I didn't believe it, and now I do. 
And, you know, it's, well, it's been 18 years since I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but the final verse tonight, and I think I just want to end here, is 1 John 5, 7. And it, you know, all these verses, I'm just kind of, I'm picking them out a little bit, but I, and maybe this is a teaching that, you know, you would do on a couple Sundays in a row, but 1 John 5, 7 talks about a little bit about one thing. He says, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The three that bear record or bear witness in heaven. The baptism of the Holy Ghost in you is a witness of the work of God in you. Okay? He's a witness to what God has done. Without, without him, you, you lose... He's kind of the... He's kind of the scribe in certain respects. I mean, he stands right next to you. He's as close to you as your breath. And he is the one who talks to you, who witnesses to you, who bears witness of what God is doing. And if you, if you are open to it, and, and, and that's not just... It's not terribly easy sometimes because sometimes we do allow the things of this world going back to righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, okay? When we miss that, when, that's, when there's a battle over that, sometimes, you know, we don't hear it. We get a little um, spiritual tinnitus, you know? We, we, we miss the, 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 the word or what God is talking to us. And there are other times when I realize that God just speaks to me about so many little things that I don't always think of him as. And I've taken time recently um, to thank him. Like, just little things that you would say, like, you forgot something. And suddenly it's like, it's there. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's where I left it. Or it's not just some random memory popping up, you know, it's, it is the spirit speaking, even simple, deep things, definitely simple things. Yes, definitely too. And we as believers baptized in the Holy ghost have the, the great ability to know that the father and the son and the Holy ghost, as he says, are one. And that part of God, the Holy Ghost witnesses to us and speaks to us and talks to us and encourages us and leads us and brings us from glory to glory. He moves us from place to place in the spirit. He moves us along, matures us, moves us along, takes another, takes and does another work that builds us up. You know, sometimes, you know, we... Sometimes we have a tendency to go backwards a little bit. We lose our connection to him because of things in our life. But the Holy Ghost continues to speak to us and to move us forward and to move us along. So tonight, I, I, I encourage you. I, I encourage you that if, if you've never received the Holy Ghost in baptism, in terms of speaking in other tongues... Seek us out. Look, talk to us about it. Glad to pray for you. Pastor Rock, I know, will pray for you. Pastor, Pastor Vince will pray for you. The Benedettos will pray with you. I'll pray with you. My wife will pray with you. If you're looking, if you believe that there's a, I believe there's a place for you in the spirit beyond which all of us are at. And we have that ability to move forward in Christ, to hear the word of the Lord, to hear that witness, and to move, and to move down the line um, in maturity. And if you, if you feel tonight that that's something you'd, that you'd like to experience or you want to know more about, I, I encourage you, take some time and talk to somebody tonight here who's experienced it, who understands it. And... Um, I believe that God truly, truly will reward you. Your faith, your, your, 
your, your, your desire to know God more and deeper uh, will, um, will be rewarded. So let's pray. Thank you, Father. I give you the glory tonight. We trust you, God, with your, that your word is true. And as we read your word and as we talk about what it says, we're, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you reward us, you, you encourage us, you, you, you tell us the things in our ear that we need to hear. I, I give you the glory tonight and just ask that uh, your spirit would be here with us. You would um, speak to those who wish the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, um, or who want to experience it in a new and different way. And um, we just want to thank you that we can trust you to, to reward us for our faith and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.